As Denis Villeneuve has evolved as a filmmaker, he's become a key practitioner of the suspense set piece. My favourite sequence in June charts the House of Atreides clan going on a tour of the Arrakis desert for the first time, after resettling from their home planet at the request of the Emperor. I want to break down how the sequence works on the levels of suspense, but also how Villeneuve uses it to build both the characters and the world whilst developing the film's core themes, and doing this mostly through action. This video is sponsored by Mubi. Get one month free at mubi.com slash the discarded image. The sequence starts with a very Villeneuve-esque God's Eye aerial shot that makes the landscape feel like an unfathomable and mysterious terrain. The seemingly endless desert, aided by the warm tone of Hans Zimmer's music, feels like a promising place that's full of potential, as the House of Atreides will be harvesting here to build up their own power. Yet from the very first line spoken, we get a big clue about where things are heading. What would you do if your ornithopter went down out here? You wouldn't want to go down out there. It's worm territory. This isn't the first we've heard of the worms. Some groundwork has already been laid to make them both mythic and fearful. The largest and most dangerous organism on Arrakis is the sandworm. To create suspense in the typical Hitchcockian way, you want to play with subjective points of view so that the audience can be put into the same tense situation as the characters. Watch the right, watch the right. In Sicario, with the set piece in Villeneuve's career that is most similar to this one, he used the classic template of having us see the world through one main audience surrogate, Kate, the FBI agent. Eyes on rooftops. Whereas here, there are numerous characters that are ultimately in the same boat, or Thopter, Dust Club. who are getting the necessary exposition about this foreign world from Liet Kine, so that they and we understand the situation. That's one of your harvesters. As they move towards the spice harvester, Villeneuve lets the shot play out at length, really lingering to subconsciously tell us its significance, being the key area where the suspense will eventually unfold. And on a thematic level, this emphasis really hits home the idea of the almost colonialist objective of the House of Atreides, tapping this foreign world for their own benefit. You can see the spice scattered over the surface. Villeneuve does a great job of keeping us in his character's perspective, with the camera often placed inside the vehicle, so it feels like we're in there too, as well as POV shots looking outside. He's disciplined to never allow us to see anything the characters couldn't, and the handheld camera adds little shakes that help build up the anxiety. Why don't we just shield the crawlers? A shield's a death sentence in the desert. It attracts the worms and drives them into a killing frenzy. Even though Liet Kine seems calm, the phrase killing frenzy hints at how dangerous this situation is. And the fact that their shields are ineffective against the worms also hints at how the Atreides technology will ultimately be useless when faced with this otherworldly environment. Is that a worm? Watch here how the suspense is drawn out as the camera sits behind Liette, where at first we can't see anything outside, and how long it takes for her to spot the worm. Big one. Now the danger has been established, Villeneuve uses the spotter aircraft to clearly lay out the geography, so we understand where everything is. And it's presumably a safe vantage point for the characters. Yet this whole spice harvesting operation just seems unnervingly precarious. So what happens now? They'll call a carry-all to lift the crawler. They'll harvest right up to the last minute. And there's a subtle feeling of panic as the camera scrambles around for what will save the workers. There it is. It all feels like they're playing with fire out here, doing something that's just not natural to the environment, and something is bound to go wrong. It brings to mind the famous suspense sequence in Jurassic Park, which is built on a similar idea, where we have another complicated security system set up to manage another wild creature that humans are trying to contain. Or this immensely complex plan, aka a Mission Impossible, where an intricate strategy needs to be carried out to a T. But any unexpected element can lay all those precise plans into chaos. And back here in the desert, an unexpected fall in this intricate system provides a similar catalyst for things to finally ramp up a notch. And the POV shots get even more frenzied. Carry on the sector. Please respond. 
How many men on that crawler? This leads to Duke Leto's big character moment when he decides to attempt a rescue mission. Despite his colonialist desires, it shows that at least compared to the Harkonnens, he's a thoughtful, admirable leader, willing to risk his and his family's well-being to do the honorable thing. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. Although, of course, this admirable trait is also his and his family's downfall, which this sequence foreshadows. After all the suspense has been tightly wound up, Villeneuve minimizes the score and sound effects for a breathless moment as the Thopter makes its descent. It's the cinematic equivalent of taking a deep breath. As the vehicle lands, the screen is filled with dust particles, which establishes a major visual motif for the rest of this sequence. The sand was the first thing that was emphasized when the Atreides clan arrived in Arrakis. And now it's even more prominent, the lack of visibility acting as a metaphor for this family who are blinded by their desire to control this desert. Even though the stakes are high and the worm is approaching fast, when Paul leaves the Thopter, everything slows down. As Paul's feet touch the sand for the first time, the length of time Villeneuve holds on this big close-up really marks the significance of this action. It's the first time Paul has made contact with the terrain he is destined to become a part of. But this sense of time almost stopping for Paul also heightens the suspense because there's really no time for this sort of personal revelation. This close-up of the spies marks the start of the mind-altering effects it will have on him. It's already starting to give him a new perspective. As he looks up at the heavy machinery, there's a sense that he's suddenly seeing the absurdity of what's happening out here, and that he's a part of the machine that's pillaging these resources. Although Paul is lost in the moment, Villeneuve still wants us to have a clear sense of where everything is. He uses the spotter aircraft again to let us know where the worm is in proximity to everything. And the lack of visibility inside the ship adds to the pressure because Leto doesn't know where Paul is. Where are they? Throughout the sequence, Villeneuve has been very disciplined with the way he reveals the approaching worm. We've only ever seen it from a distance, which makes a moment like this fully impactful. Paul momentarily snaps out of his trance, but the visibility issues that are linked with the sandworm explosion is getting worse and worse until he's finally engulfed in dust. And with spice particles now fully taking over his consciousness, this lack of visibility is emulated with the camera being out of focus. He's completely lost at the worst time. And the camera moves away from him to show we are losing him even more. Once again, Villeneuve uses the spotter aircraft, this time flying above the worm to show how it's almost reached our protagonists. But pieces of equipment are still being taken off to make room for the workers. Even though things are more chaotic now, Villeneuve still keeps us grounded to the characters, connecting the worm within the same shot to where they are, with increasing intensity. The worm is practically on top of them now, but there's still someone missing. Oh! Despite Paul seemingly being out of it, he mutters under his breath, I recognize your footsteps, old man. This seems like a callback to the training scene with Gurney earlier. He tells you by your footsteps, Gurney Halley. But it has a double meaning, as the worms are also referred to as Old Man, suggesting how Paul is starting to become in tune with the desert. As they manage to escape at the last minute, for the first time we really see these characters in the full context of their environment. The shot gets wider until they are just specks on the screen, showing how ultimately powerless they are in this vast desert. And as the sand breaks apart, it takes on an almost psychedelic appearance, suggesting it has metaphysical or religious qualities. Bless the maker and his water. Bless the coming and going of him. And for the first time, we finally see the worm itself as it swallows whole the harvesting machinery, really cementing how this technology is no match for it. The House of Atreides will not be able to have any control of this environment. Only Paul see ways to harness its power. Denis Villeneuve might be helming epic blockbusters now, but every director had to start somewhere. And if you want to check out one of his earliest Canadian features, then head over to this video sponsor, Mubi. 2000's Maelstrom is strikingly different from any of the films he's made in America. 
and is arguably his most experimental, with a bold mix of tones. It's both dark and philosophical, but also a comedy. And it has one of the strangest narrational devices I've come across. I won't spoil it here, but it's worth watching just for that. Mubi is a curated streaming service, a place with a truly eclectic selection of some of the best and most interesting cinema, all hand-selected. Every day they premiere a new film. From iconic directors to emerging auteurs, there's always something new to discover. It's like your own personal film festival, streaming anytime, anywhere. And you can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash the discarded image and get a whole month of great cinema for free.